Hello Prescott Pumas, welcome back from spring break. I hope you had a restful week. I hope you got to have some fun. Um, I hope you didn't do any schoolwork and you just had a great time with your families. But we're back. I have some more stories for us to read. Um, so I have three stories again today. We have Corduroy, one of my favorite stories. I loved to read this when I was a little kid. We have Eric Carl, The Very Clumsy Click, or this is by Eric Carl. And the story is called The Very Clumsy Click Beetle. And this one is cool, it has some sounds. Um, listen for them and see if you can hear the click beetle. And the last we have Swim Little Wombat Swim. So we'll kick off our first story time back with three, these three stories. I hope you enjoy them. All right, let's get into it. Okay. Corduroy by Dawn Freeman. Corduroy is a bear who once lived in the toy department of a big store. Day after day, he waited with all the other animals and dolls for somebody to come along and take him home. The store was always filled with shoppers buying all sorts of things, but no one ever seemed to want a small bear in green overalls. Then, one morning, a little girl stopped and looked straight into Corduroy's bright eyes. Oh, Mommy, she said, look, there's the very bear I've always wanted. Not today, dear, her mother sighed. I've spent too much already. Besides, he doesn't look new. He's lost the button to one of his shoulder straps. Corduroy watched them sadly as they walked away. I didn't know I'd lost a button, he said to himself. Tonight, I'll go see if I can find it. Late that evening, when all the shoppers had gone and the doors were shut and locked, Corduroy climbed carefully down from his shelf and began searching everywhere on the floor for his lost button. Do you see his button? Hmm. Suddenly, he felt the floor moving under him. Quite by accident, he had stepped onto an escalator, and up he went. Could this be a mountain, he wondered? I think I've always wanted to climb a mountain. He stepped off the escalator as it reached the next floor, and then before his very eyes was a most amazing sight. Tables and chairs and lamps and sofas and rows and rows of beds. This must be a palace, Corduroy gasped. I guess I've always wanted to live in a palace. He wandered around admiring the furniture. This must be a bed, he said. I've always wanted to sleep in a bed and up he crawled onto a large, thick mattress. All at once, he saw something small and round. Why, here's my button, he cried, and he tried to pick it up, but like all the other buttons on the mattress, it was tied down tight. He yanked and pulled with both paws until pop! Off came the button, and off the mattress corduroy toppled. Bang! Into a tall floor lamp. Over it went with a crash. Ouch. Corduroy didn't know it, but there was someone else awake in the store. The night watchman was going his rounds on the floor above. When he heard the crash, he came dashing down the escalator. Now who in the world did that, he exclaimed. Somebody must be hiding around here. flashed his light under and over sofas and beds until he came to the biggest bed of all, and there he saw two fuzzy brown ears sticking up from under the cover. Hello, he said. How did you get upstairs? The watchman tucked Corduroy under his arm and carried him down the escalator and set him on the shelf in the toy department with the other animals and dolls. Corduroy was just waking up when the first customer came into the store in the morning, and there, looking at him with a wide, warm smile, was the same little girl he'd seen the day before. I'm Lisa, she said, and you're going to be my very own bear. 
Last night, I counted what I've saved in my piggy bank, and my mother said I could bring you home. Shall I put him in a box for you? The sales lady asked. Oh, no thank you, Lisa's answered, and she carried Corduroy home in her arms. She ran all the way up four flights of stairs into her family's apartment and straight to her own room. Corduroy blinked. There was a chair and a chest of drawers, and alongside a girl's sized bed stood a little bed just the right size for him. The room was small, nothing like that enormous palace in the apartment store. This must be home, he said. I know I've always wanted a home. Lisa sat down with Corduroy on her lap and began to sew a button on his overalls. I like you the way you are, she said, but you'll be more comfortable with your shoulder strap fastened. You must be a friend, said Corduroy. I've always wanted a friend. Me too, said Lisa, and gave him a big hug. The end. That was a good story. I like Corduroy. I'm glad he found a home at the end and a friend. All right, here we go. The Very Clumsy Click Beetle by Eric Carle. Remember, we read another story about that word clumsy. Do you remember what it meant or did you learn what it meant? It means when something's kind of awkward, it's hard to do something. Um, it's kind of hard to use or you're always falling over yourself. So let's see what is happening with this click beetle and why, what makes him so clumsy. And the author and illustrator is Eric Carr. One fine morning, a young click beetle decided to go for a walk. At noon, it climbed up and down a flower. In the afternoon, it rummaged through a pile of pebbles. In the evening, it crawled among the tall blades of grass. And when it turned night, the young click beetle crept up a tree. After a while, it got tired and fell to the ground. It landed on its back. The young click beetle tried very hard to turn over onto its feet, but it couldn't. Help, it cried. All along, a wise old click beetle had been watching the young click beetle. Tomorrow morning, I will teach you how to click and flip through the air and land on your feet, said the wise old click beetle. In the meantime, you may as well go to sleep. Good night. The next morning, the wise old click beetle said, Look at me. This is how it is done. First, it turned onto its back, and then with a loud click. It flipped through the air and landed on its feet. Now you try it, said the wise old beetle. Thank you, that looks easy, replied the young click beetle. Just then, an earthworm stuck its head out of the ground. Look at me, said the young click beetle. And with a loud click, it flipped through the air, but it landed on its back. How very clumsy of me, said the young click beetle. Just then, a turtle ambled, ambled by. Better luck next time, said the turtle. Keep on trying. Look at me, said the young click beetle. And with a loud click, it flipped through the air. But it landed on its back. How very clumsy of me, said the young click beetle. Just then, a snail slithered by. Don't worry, said the snail. You'll get there. Look at me, said the young click beetle. And with a loud click, it flipped through the air. But it landed on its back. How very clumsy of me, said the young click beetle. Just then, a mouse scurried by. You need a little more practice, said the mouse. Look at me, said the young click beetle. And with a loud click, it flipped through the air but it landed on its back. Just then, oh, what was this? The young click beetle had never seen anything so big. It could not move. It was scared. <gasps> Quick, click and flip, cried the wise old click beetle who was watching. <coughs> and the young click beetle clicked and flipped through the air. But this time, it did three graceful somersaults. And 
landed on its feet. Look at you, cried, shouted the wise old click beetle. You have done it. The end, said the click beetle. There he is. He clicked and he landed. Oh my goodness. Awesome. So he couldn't do it at first, but he tried and he tried. The more you practice, the better you get. And he learned how to land on his feet. Good job, the click beetle. So, like, if you're learning how to tie your shoes, maybe you can't tie your shoes yet, but you keep practicing. Keep practicing every day. Try, 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 and eventually you'll get it. You'll learn how to tie your shoes. So just keep practicing at something. Don't give up if it's hard at first. All right, our last story today is Swim, Little Wombat, Swim. This one is kind of a silly story. <laughs> About two friends who get to know each other. So while we're reading this story, think about your own friends that you have at school or at home. Little Wombat was looking for apples. Hello, said a funny squeaky voice. Wombat spun around. Hello, I'm Wombat. Who are you? I'm Platypus, said a funny fuzzy face. Then, with a funny, shuffly walk, Platypus waddled to the pond and disappeared. Platypus. Little Wombat giggled. <laughs> Platypus. He tried to waddle too. He giggled and waddled, shuffled and chuckled, nearer and nearer to the water's edge. <gasps> Grr, splash! Little Wombat sank like a stone. Uh-oh. In a flash, Platypus darted towards him. Before he knew it, Wombat was at the surf surface and safely out of the water. Thank you, Platypus, he spluttered. He wished he had not laughed at his new friend. How did you learn to swim like that? It's easy, Platypus smiled. I'll teach you. First, little Wombat had to hold on to the edge and kick his legs as hard as he could. Then, he used a log as a float and he splashed all around the pond. He splashed and kicked until he was worn out. Time for lunch, said Platypus. Little Wombat munched on the juicy red apples and Platypus munched on a handful of shrimps. Never swim on a full tummy, said Platypus. So they snoozed in the shade for an hour. That afternoon, Little Wombat learned to paddle like a dog and dive like a frog. Then through all the splashing, Little Wombat heard his name being called. Rabbit and Koala had come to see what he had been doing all day. Little Wombat beamed. Platypus taught me to swim. Come on, Platypus, let's have a race. Wombat, Wombat. Koala and Rabbit cheered him on. No, not Wombat. Little Wombat grinned at his new friend. Wombatty Puss. The Hmm. You see how they combine their names? Wombat and Platypus. When you put them together, you get Wombatty Puss. That's kind of a silly story. That was fun. But it was another story about working hard. Um, this time he worked hard with his friend. But he kept practicing and practicing. And he learned how to swim. I like that story. All right, friends, thank you so much for joining me for story time. There's going to be some activities down below. If you have any book requests, anything you want me to read about, like dinosaurs or maybe unicorns, anything at all, let me know, and I'll see if I can find a book about it and do it for our next story time. All right, you guys, see you tomorrow. I love you. I miss you. Take care of each other, okay? Bye.